Uh, oh, that was good. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Double T Gaming. Today, I just kind of want to talk about and more like rant a little bit about everything that I think is wrong with NBA 2K17. Now, don't get me wrong here. 2K17 is a great game. I like it a lot better than I did 2K16 and 2K15. But there are still a lot of just annoying things that are still in the game and things that have also been added to the game that are just incredibly stupid. Now I'm not really going to talk about the gameplay that much because I don't have a problem with the gameplay. I feel like it's challenging and I like having a challenge when I'm playing a game. I don't like it being a simple whatever like it was in 2K15 and the 2Ks before this. But I'm also not going to talk about my team that much. I haven't played my team probably since NBA 2K, gosh, I think it was 13. That's when it was just a strictly bronze, silver, and gold type players now there's like eight different cards for one type of player like there's a there's a dynamic steph curry card there's a regular steph curry card there's a like a throwback steph curry card rookie of the year steph curry card whatever mvp steph curry i don't need all that just give me one dynamic and maybe one just regular card and that's it now there's like eight different colors of cards i know sapphire was the best now it's like they're throwing ruby and emerald and i don't even know all i know back in my day back in Back, you youngins don't remember this, but back in my day, the gold was the best type of player there was. Alright, that was it. Now I don't understand what's going on with all this other stuff. So I don't really play my team that much anymore. I think it's just too much. Way too complicated than this should be. A lot of people probably understand. They're probably like, oh, you're stupid. I don't care. Just give me th the three different types of cards that I need. Bronze, silver, and gold. It's be understandable for everybody. I like, I like being simplistic with that kind of stuff. But anyway... So I'm mainly going to talk about my player mode, because I feel like that's the mode everybody plays the most. That's the one I play the most. I love it. I've played it the most since NBA 2K10 when it first got introduced. Back in 2K10 when you had to do, like, D... No, actually, that was 2K11 where I actually really got into it. 2K10, it was pretty okay. 2K11, they made a lot of improvements to it, like the D-League, Summer League, Draft Combine, all this other stuff. But I'm talking about 2K11, because I feel like 2K11 was the best NBA 2K there's ever been. I just love everything about it. I don't think my team mode was out in 2K11, but the crew mode, everything about 2K11 was fantastic. And I, I try and compare all my 2K games to 2K11. And this game, it's it's similar in a lot of ways, but the biggest way I feel like this game is different than anything else, and I think it's stupid, it's a little bit similar to 2K16 in this, right? But the, my player archetypes are just way too strict. So they did this a little bit in 2K16 with the inside, outside, and balance, because it basically makes it so you can't have a Kevin Durant type of player, a 6'11", small forward you could pretty much do everything could shoot ridiculously well but now in 2k17 you just can't have that if you want to be a sharpshooter you can't be a steph curry because you can't shoot off the dribble if you want to be a russell westbrook you guess you could be a slasher but you can't really shoot the ball that well like he can from mid-range i just feel like the caps are way too strict and the biggest thing that makes me so mad about the caps it doesn't make any sense to me i'm in a slashing point guard i'm a 6-5 slasher i'm on a pro-am team and I'm, I'm going to give up my slasher just to be a glass cleaner because that's pretty much how it is these days. But when I'm when I'm on my slasher and I catch an open three, I have to start running in order to get my bar a little bit bigger. Because if I'm wide open for a three-point attempt, I cannot make it at all. My bar is probably as small as a center's bar would be from that distance. It's ridiculous. But when I start running in one direction, like if I catch at the top of the key, I'm going to start running to the left or to the right with the ball dribbling. Just because my shoot-off dribble is so much better than my actual standing three-point shot, then my bar will get huge and I can get a perfect release nearly every time. I just think it's so stupid. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. Where well, I can run and make a three, but I cannot make a wide-open three like in the corner. It doesn't make any sense to me at all. I don't get that. I have the shortest arms there is. I did everything to go to my shooting, but I still can't make an open three like that. And it doesn't make any sense. What if you want to be like a Vince Carter type of player? It's probably the greatest dunker of all time, but also a great three-point shooter. You just can't do that. I don't know. Maybe that's just me venting about it, but I feel like a lot of people have problems with the archetypes. Because there's just like... I know... What is it? Sharpshooter was amazingly good. Grand badges and all that. I'm going to get to the badges in a second. There's the grand badge that got blown up because some dude dropped 95 points in a game. Good job for putting that video up, dude. You're the, you're the best man ever. Just kidding. Agent Zero, I'm calling you out. And uh, I'm okay with the weight affecting... Like your stats because i feel like that should have been at the beginning because back in the day weight didn't do anything like you can make a 350 dude and have a 99 speed if you wanted to but now weight actually affects your speed and everything and that makes sense to me i don't really see how your arm length can affect your shooting that much because you look at a player like kevin durant his wingspan is ridiculous but he can still make almost every three takes i don't know that's just my opinion on the whole archetype thing you can't just make like if you wanted to model your player after michael jordan like i say 
a Michael Jordan on the, I don't know, 93 Bulls team who was an okay shooter. Could make an open three if he wanted to. I believe 93 is when he hit those six threes against Clyde Drexler. So yeah, he could shoot if he wanted to, but now you just can't make that type of player because you can't dunk and can't shoot at the same time. Back in 2K16, I said this before, it was a little bit like that with the inside, outside, and balanced. Now, if you were outside, you could shoot ridiculously well. And back at the beginning of 2K16, you could dunk really well too, but I think they patched that into it. So I don't know, but I played an inside shooting guard near the end of 2K16, and I was still making threes wide open if I had to. But now it's just, I can't make a three to save my life, unless I'm starting to run with the ball. Moving on from the archetype thing. That was just the creation of the player. Now it's the actual, like, features in my player. I feel like, in my opinion, I am on my phone, in the my court, in the menus of my player mode, more than I'm actually playing games. Like, I feel like I'm just going through these text messages, looking at all this stuff. I see something I have to do at 3 o'clock p.m. that day. There's one at 6, there's one at 9. I have to balance all this stuff. I get that they're trying to be realistic with it. See, this is what an actual NBA player is like, but I don't want to do that. I just want to play the game. I know people are like, well, you could just sim to all the games. Yeah, I could, but then I can't upgrade my player like I want to. And speaking about upgrading, I love now that, because back in 2K16, you could just walk into a practice session and it would go towards your upgrade bar. You could walk in, quit immediately, but now in 2K17, you actually have to go do stuff in practice, like do vertical jumps, squats, bench, all that. I love that, but I feel like the off days are just being dominated by hanging out with the right people, trying to get the right things. It's like connections all over again. I, I guess connections was okay for a lot of people. Maybe people didn't have a problem with it. I personally did. I don't know. I just wanted to play. I just let me play the game. And also, 2K16 was big with this. They, they lowered it down a little bit, but I guess because Spike Lee was 2K16, there was just way too much story and cutscenes in these games. I don't need to have all these cutscenes, maybe the occasional press conference if I need it, but I feel like in 2K17, after every game, there's a cutscene with me and Justice talking about our feelings or whatever. Like, hey, hey, are you going to get traded? Hey, how's your girl doing? I don't care about that. Just let me play basketball like I did in 2K. I'm comparing everything to 2K11, but that's because I just feel like that was the best 2K there was. Just let me play basketball like I did in 2K11. That's all I need. I don't need all this added drama to the story. I know they're trying to make it, hey, you're a real NBA player. This is how life is like. I get it. This is a video game. I just want to play good in the season to get my overall up to 99, and I'll go into Pro-Am and play with my friends. But you can't get your overall to 99 if you play the season. That's the next thing I'm going to talk about. But before I get to that, let me just talk about Park in general. Park, it's where all the cheesers go. You're not going to see a cheeser on Pro-Am because they all go to Park because that's where... That's where all the trash talking ghetto street ballers are these days. And I guess you gotta live with that. They're not gonna change any cheese. There's always gonna be cheese in park. There's always gonna be something issue people are dealing with. But the biggest thing I feel like is I don't think you should be able to have your grand badge in the park. Now if you don't know what grand badges are, it's like an epic version of all your badges put together. It just makes your player pretty much unstoppable. I know that the sharpshooter had the grand badge, which made him drop. Like a couple weeks ago, if you had a sharpshooter and you had your grand badge on, you would make it from anywhere on the court. It's ridiculous. And I get what they were trying to do with badges. I like how you can only upgrade specific badges, and I like how there's another level to the badge and Hall of Fame badge. But I feel like grand badges should have just stayed offline like they were when the game started out. Because there was a patch or something like a hot fix a couple weeks ago that let grand badges go online. And ever since then, it's been going crazy. Like, if you have a grand badge light up, you're going to score no matter what you are. It doesn't matter. And that's something I feel like needs to be saved for the offline section of the game. I don't need to see a grand badge lighting up on the court. Because that doesn't show you're skillful in the game. Like, if you're a sharpshooter and you have your grand badge on, you could pull up from anywhere you want and you'll make it. You don't even have to have a good release or anything. That doesn't show skill. That just shows, hey, you grinded for all those badges. Good for you. And now they turn into this epic badge. And I guess good for you again. But still, I don't need to see grand badges on online, pro-am, park, any of that. I mean, I guess it's pretty cool. But still, I don't want to see that. I just want to see your skill on the court, not how many badges you can get in a row. But anyway, the biggest thing about park, one of the biggest things about park, the second biggest thing about park is what is the point of having all these different like types of parks now? Like if a Rough Rider can now play with a baller on a 3v3 court if they want to, and like a flyer play with a Rough Rider, flyer with a baller, baller with a flyer, all that stuff, what is the point of separating them into three different groups if they can all play together? Back in 2K15 and 2K16, the only way you could do that was if you were on the stage and you were like squatted up or whatever. But now, like, you could play with anybody you want. It's I don't understand the point in that. What is the point of separating the three parks if you could play with each other what's going to happen during rival day are they going to make it so you just can just play with your team like with your specific park I, I don't understand the point why would they make it so you could do that and just give me the same number of courts on each park like if i want like say i think the what the flyers only have one 2v2 court but some other place has two 2v2 courts 
Just give me two 2v2 court, or maybe like three 2v2, three three on three. Take away the 20, game of 21 thing, the one on one on one. I don't think anybody plays that. If you play that, you're only trying to boost your rep up. And I don't know, I guess take away the four on four too, in my opinion, because if you want to play four on four, you might as well go play Pro Am. But I get how people just don't want to play Pro Am because they can't cheese in Pro Am that well. Anyway, I don't understand why anybody anybody could play together i don't i don't see what the point in that is there's no competition in that you'd be like oh i'm a trash talk as rough rider but i'm gonna have him on my team next game doesn't make sense to me now the biggest thing that pisses me off so much about this game is that you can only get to a 95 rating i said this before you can only get to a 95 rating by playing season that's it you max out at a 95 if you just play the season mode the my career mode not go online at all the only way to get yourself to a 99 overall without glitching the game, doing that backup save thing people were doing a couple weeks ago. I think they hot fixed that. But the only way to get to a 99 overall is to go into Park or Pro Am and rev up to at least a Superstar 1. And every time you get Superstar 1, Superstar 2, Superstar 3, you get upgrades. Why are they forcing you to play online? I personally do not like Park that much. I feel like it's so much cheese on it, like I said. And now they're pretty much forcing me. If I want a 99 my player, instead of just grinding there for hours on hours on hours like I did in 2K16, they're forcing me to play park with these people I do not want to play with. That is so stupid. They're forcing you to play online. I don't want to play online like that. I don't want to just do that. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's something that irks me the most about this game. I have to play online if I want to get my 99 overall. It's just it. Because everyone's going to be 95. They're all going to be cheesing trying to get those upgrades, get the superstars. And I just don't want to play with those people. I don't like it. I hate it, actually. I think it's the dumbest thing. Whoever came up with that needs to get fired immediately. I don't see what the point is having to force these people, force us, the players, to go online into park. I know some people that don't even play park at all because they hate it so much. But now if they want to get a 99, they have to. They have to go into park. They have to go into pro-am. I don't see the point in that. I don't, I don't get that at all. I think that's so stupid. That entire concept about that is stupid. Everything they did to park this year was stupid what's gonna happen during rival weekend i don't know i think it's gonna be stupid i don't like there's too much story in 2k16 2k17 too many cutscenes. just let me play the freaking game i'm on my phone and in the menus of 2k in the my player mode way more than i'm actually playing a game and these badges i don't know i like there's another level you can earn but i don't need to see grand badges lighting up online maybe that's just me but don't get me wrong, 2K17 is a great game. I like a lot of the features they put in. Maybe I'll put everything right with 2K17. I don't know, but it's just me venting about everything wrong with 2K17 right now. And I hope that I hope they fix it. Oh, and the free throw thing, I don't really like what they did with that either. Just let me upgrade my free throw sh through shooting like I did in all the other games. But anyway, tell me what you guys think about the game. What's wrong with it? What's right with it? What needs to be fixed with it? What needs to be improved in 2K18? Hopefully they can get some stuff right. Hopefully they separate the park skin or at least just make it so there's no more bonuses to having a specific team on the park. I don't know. I'm just venting a little bit. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. This is Double T Gaming. If you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like on it. Subscribe to the channel for more 2K content. And I will see you guys in the next video.